morning. I'm Gavin Bennett, and I'll be teaching the International Merger Control module in the mid term. Um, just a little bit about the, the faculty for the course. I've um, been practicing competition law with a heavy emphasis on merger control at an international law firm for the last 20 or so years. And um, I've now just been appointed also a member of the UK Competition Commission. Um, I'll be joined by um, Bill Allen, who has also had, he has had, had an extra decade on me. I think he's had over 30 years of experience and actually is you know, widely recognised probably as one of the leading competition lawyers in, in the UK. And he is now also a member of the Competition Appeal Tribunal in the UK and also teaches the competition LLM um, uh, here in Cambridge as well. We'll be joined by Albertina, who I'll allow briefly to introduce herself. Hi, Albertina. <coughs> My name is Albertina Bos Lawrence. Um, I'm a university senior lecturer and I'm a director of studies in law and then um, a fellow of Girlfriend College. I've been in Cambridge since I was a PhD student and I've been teaching in the faculty since 1997 and I've been teaching consistently in the LLM competition law course since 1999. I'm absolutely delighted uh, to have the opportunity now to become involved with the MCL and to work alongside with this program. Uh, in the competition course in the LLM, for those of you who will attend the subject forum tomorrow, there is one part of the syllabus that deals with merger control, and that's mainly with an EU sort of semantic, whereas this course, as Mr. Robert will tell you in a moment, has much more of a comparative dimension. So, say I look forward very much to seeing you all in the LLM. Thank you. So between us, we hope to give you a good balance between academic rigour and real, you know, the law behind merger control, but also an insight into the practice of merger control. And I think merger control is particularly a subject where a practitioner perspective can give you a real insight into how the cases are actually conducted. So what is merger control? What are we talking about? It's it's talking about um, transactions, when you're doing corporate transactions, the need that certain transactions will need to obtain clearance from the competition authorities. And we'll be focusing in particular on international transactions, international m and and global deals. And um, more and more, we're finding that competition authorities are into blue. When I first started out down the road of competition law 20, 25 years ago, um, competition law was perhaps a little bit more of a technical area, wasn't quite so uh, well known. Now it is right at the forefront of corporate transactions. I think uh, CEOs, um, senior partners, uh, finance directors are really focused on merger control. If they're doing a, a, a transaction, particularly if they're doing a global deal, they will want to make sure that they can get that deal through. And it's not, it's not just a process issue. I mean, processes are very important, and we'll be talking about getting those processes right. But actually, substantively, the deal can end up on the rocks if you don't get it right. Even this year alone, I mean, pretty unusually, the European Commission has already prohibited at least three major transactions. So, take an example, the, the Deutsche Börse uh, proposed merger with the New York Stock Exchange was prohibited by the European Commission. And that means that all of that energy and resource in putting that deal together was completely lost because the competition authorities stepped in and prohibited it. We also saw the UPS VAT merger prohibited, and Ryanair tried for the third time <coughs> to buy Air Lingus. First time it was blocked, the second time it withdrew its attempt, and the third time it got blocked again. And uh, you know, I think Michael O'Leary, you know, as chief executive of Ryanair, might have now got the message. But no doubt there were a lot of lawyers making quite a lot of money on Ryanair's attempts to bid for Air Lingus. But anyway, it's been <laughs> prohibited now pretty much for the third time. But actually there, being, you know, if you see your roles as corporate transaction lawyers, getting that right and making sure the client is aware of the risk and then manage the risk successfully, both in terms of the corporate documentation 
but also in terms of managing that antitrust process, the competition process, and understanding how best to maximize the chance of success through that process is critical for the success of the, the success of the transaction. Now, I think it's a fascinating area. I'm passionate about it, and hopefully I can share some of that passion with you. One of the reasons I'm passionate about it is, although there's a lot of law, and there's some, there are plenty of cases, a lot of it's administrative law, so it's created by decision-making by administrative bodies rather than by courts. We'll be looking at some court cases, but actually uh, the, there are fewer court cases in this area probably than, than in many other areas you might study. But it also gives you a window onto some other disciplines, such as economics, and government affairs. So I'm no economist. Um, I have no formal training as an, as an economist. But you know, I deal with economists all the time. And actually understanding, because when you're reviewing transactions and trying to work out which transaction gives rise to a competition issue and which doesn't, <coughs> economics provides you with the framework within which to analyze that. Don't worry, I'm not going to ask any of you to become economists. And I can hardly do that because I'm certainly not one. But actually understanding some of the tools that economists use is really critical. And actually it's really quite fun. I, I really enjoy understanding some of those principles of macroeconomics and industrial organisation, which actually influence the way competition policy is developed and applied. And, um, and I do think that's interesting. The other area that is interesting is understanding the political influences that inform some of the decisions. In an ideal world, your competition authority would be completely immune from uh, political influence, and in some countries, it is more immune than others. In other countries, it is heavily influenced by political and policy developments in a wider field. And understanding those influences is also really interesting. And, you know, we're not we're certainly not going to become lobbyists and public affairs consultants, but actually understanding how those influences can shape decision making in the area is also, I think, a really interesting and fascinating aspect of this area of law. So in terms of the focus of the course, it is very much an international course, as our Bettina said, and we really will be focusing on global transactions and the application of merger control rules around the world. Um, however, in order, you know, if you were to just try and deal with however many countries around the world, it would be a pretty shallow course, because you just touch on one country and then move on to another and really never get to any depth. So we will focus on the European merger control, and in a way use that as the starting point to really try to understand merger control policy and law in depth. And we will, you know, we will use that as our as our framework, but throughout we will be using an international comparison. And also if you think about what are the three major jurisdictions in the world, and four or five years ago there were two major jurisdictions in the world for merger control, the US and Europe, and we will therefore also be covering um, the US and uh, a New York partner will actually come over from one of the lectures to actually give you some first-hand insight into the way merger control is applied in the US. But actually, over the last few years, a new, another jurisdiction has developed as sort of the third global killer, and that's China. And so we will also have one lecture which will be focused on China, and we will be looking comparatively at the US and China and other countries around the world as we analyze and look at European law. And I will actually deal and deliver the, the Chinese aspect myself, as, as it happens, I've been leading the China um, competition practice at uh, my uh, law firm over the last four or five years and going out to China three or four times a year over, over that period. So fortunately I'm in a position to give you some insights directly uh, myself into China. And I think if you ask most people, you know, most businesses, which jurisdiction are you most worried about at the moment, it would be China. And I think we'll have some very interesting and entertaining discussions around Chinese merger control and its implications for m and around the world. So there are also, in terms of the structure of the course, we will kick off with an introductory lecture, 
There may be some of you who have done some competition or in the past, perhaps as part of an undergraduate degree, some may have come across it in practice. And the point of the introduction is you know, to level the playing field a little bit so you all sort of understand the basics of competition policy. And in fact, you might ask some interesting questions about, in fact, we will ask some interesting questions about what is the point of competition policy? Why does it exist? Why do we have these laws in the first place? And we'll have a chance to, to examine that and then decide, actually, and this is one of the themes throughout the course, well, if I was going to design a, competi a new competition law, how would it look like? what would be the best features of a competition law. And it's not just a purely philosophical academic question because there are countries around the world introducing competition law um, everywhere. You know, so it is, they are actually actively thinking about how do I best design a competition law um, and in particular a merger control law. So we'll have that, um, that introduction. Then we'll do about um, four lectures on, uh, on uh, merger control starting off looking at jurisdiction, where, where, where and when do we need to file, to what extent from a practical perspective can we avoid filing, um, are there ways we can structure a transaction which means we don't have to file, um, and uh, I'm also looking at process and procedure which is, as a transaction lawyer, is, is fundamental. We'll then spend two lectures looking at um, actually how do you review transactions, and looking at some of those economic tools and uh, which transactions are likely to give rise to competition issues. We'll then turn attention to the US for one seminar, China for another, and then we'll wrap up at the end. Um, we'll do some consolidation, but also we'll talk about how you actually, as a corporate lawyer, how you can manage the antitrust risk that is so worrying the chief executive and the general counsel how you can manage that in some of the documentation, or how you can put all the risk onto the other party doing the transaction. And throughout, we will try to use case studies. Um, there's a lot of global transactions that we can use as case studies, um, some of which we've been involved with personally and can get under the skin of those transactions. So hopefully there'll be a lot of interesting live work and, and case work we can do during the, um, during the course. Um, the exam will take place at the end of the Lent term. Um, it will be closed book, and we will um, uh, we will be asking you to do three questions out of five or more, or something around that, in two hours. Although I will reassure you that although you can bring a calculator into the exam, you won't need it. <laughs> um, any questions? <laughs>